One in five adults have one. One in three of young adults have one. And these figures are only going to rise through 2025. So just exactly why are employers so squeamish about tattoos? Hi there, I'm Jake Pankin, and I'm going to be discussing the taboo of workplace tattoos. This is Bigfoot. We've been marking ourselves with ink for well over 12,000 years, dating back to ancient Maoris and Aztecs. In more recent times, tattoos became associated with renegade bikers and ne'er-do-well punks, the general dregs of society. However, tattoos have seen a resurgence in the mainstream, partly thanks to major celebrities such as Dwayne The Rock Johnson, David Beckham and Cheryl Cole becoming adorned in tattoos. But the workplace is yet to catch up with this phenomenon. I took to the streets of Manchester to get the public's view on this, but I needed some help getting their attention. Workplaces, I think. Where I work's quite open about things like that. Lots of people have got tattoos, quite visible. Um, we work with service users with a lot of tattoos, and it's sort of part of that encouraging people not to have a barrier to moving forward with your life because you've got tattoos. Um, I was having a job interview uh, for the manager of a cocktail bar, and uh, I spoke to one of the owners and she like, read my, through my CV, and she absolutely loved it. And then when I came in, she just looked at me and was like, ah. I have been let down before now. I've asked about tattoos, and they said I'm not allowed to show them. Oh, I'm just not, you get to a point where you stop applying for certain places, certain jobs, because you know for a fact they're not gonna like it. Well, as a teacher, I never even considered getting a tattoo, uh, although I wanted one. I wanted one off Cthulhu on my arm. Um, I even took out the piercings that were in my ear when I was a student uh, because I knew that most secondary schools, especially grammars, are very conservative when it comes to strange subcultural trends, even though I don't really think earrings and tattoos are subcultural anymore. They're pretty much mainstream now. But yeah, so I just didn't bother. As soon as I got out of teaching, though, on with the ink, in with the piercings. It's hypocrisy. It's like a waste of time. You're taking individuality out of the person by not allowing him to, to do what he wants with his body. Uh, it was really, really posh, swanky cocktail bar. And I had like, uh, quite, like quite a lot of business customers in and suits and stuff. And I had this one couple in one evening that um, they were like asking me about my tattoos and my piercings and stuff. And I told them how I nearly didn't get the job because of it. And they were like, oh no, no, we really like it. Like, almost. You almost, you almost seem cool and edgy for having tattoos, and we sort of feel cool and edgy by association, by coming to a place that employs someone like that. Um, so, within that one particular job alone, I've had like both positive and negative uh, views of body modifications, tattoos, and piercings, and that whole sort of thing. After talking to the people of Manchester, I was contacted by Julie. Julie wished to discuss in depth the discrimination she'd faced in the workplace over her tattoos. She also requested that her identity be kept private. This is her story. Um, I've had my tattoos. Just show you them. They're quite cute. Not bad. Mm. Not bad. Um, I've had them for about the ones on my arms. I've had for about two, three years now. I've been turned down for two jobs because I have tattoos. One was for a marketing company um, who felt that me having tattoos wouldn't be appropriate for their business. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and another one was a, a different firm of surveyors who a similar, similar sort of reaction was, you're not going to be appropriate for our business. At the job I'm in at the moment, they're very um, corporate. And I've been told on quite a few occasions that I need to keep my tattoos covered up in case um, I offend anybody with them. It, it, when I first started, I did actually look through the company handbook and it wasn't actually in there because that's one of the first things, obviously yeah. with the Maui Arms, that's one of the first thing I go to is to look, see what, what their policy is about tattoos, what their policy There wasn't anything in there at the time, but then the, the policy was updated and then I noticed once it had been updated, the tattoo policy was put in there saying that long sleeves must be worn at all times. So it was a bit of a, it's like why, you know, you've done that because I've got tattoos, you knew I had tattoos, so you've decided to implement it once I've started and I've signed my contract, so it's a bit naughty. One of the clients that they work for in, in the Northwest, they're quite a big client, and they were having like a, a little meeting, in, um, and I was told that it wouldn't be appropriate for me to go because of my tattoos. I spoke to the client on the phone many, many times, um, I've, I've dealt with them in email correspondence, and it was a bit of a, a, bit of a, a shock when they said that to me. Even more so when I found out afterwards that the actual client himself does have tattoos on his arm of his children's initials. So it was a bit like, hang on a minute, yeah, you're not being fair here. After talking to Julie, I became interested in the legality of companies' tattoo policies. After looking up workplace regulations, I was shocked to find that the law offers no protection at all to tattooed individuals, meaning getting a tattoo could cost you your job, and there's nothing you can do about it. Seeing as legality and morality are not exactly the same thing, I decided to phone these companies up and ask them to defend their stance on tattoos. Hey, thanks for calling. Have a good Hey. Hello, and welcome to Yandle Europe. See, the way she says hello, it's a person. Hello, my name's Jay, and I'm currently in the process of making a documentary about tattoos in the workplace. I can't get anyone to talk to me. I've been at this now. About an hour and a half. I've got through to four people. And each one has passed me off to someone else. One guy gave me a number. And when I look back, it was the exact number I called to get hold of him. So I don't know if they've just not got people in place to discuss this with me. Or if they just don't want to and they're just passing me along. But so far, I've found no one willing to discuss this with me. Okay, so it's quite obvious that didn't go as I planned. No one was willing to talk to me, and the only person who got back to me via email was Disney, to tell me that they're not going to talk to me, and that Amber's favourite Disney character is Olaf. Thanks, Amber. Earlier in the show, you may remember me talking to these two. Fair enough, I think, like, with stuff like being, like, a teacher or something. Or... Well, as a teacher, I never even considered getting a tattoo. Well, I travelled to Gwenthrow Primary School in North Wales to talk to Janie Davis who's a teaching assistant who doesn't look how you'd imagine she would. <laughs> Janie has been working at Gwynfro for five years, and she is quite literally covered from head to toe in tattoos. We spoke about how the children reacted towards her tattoos. At first, when they first see them, they're like, oh, and they have a good look, and then they've got, like, one of, one of our children a couple of years ago was fascinated with tattoos, and she had a couple of my favourite ones that she'd always go to and look at. Um, some of them don't even notice them mm. at all, um, and then others, um, every now and again, like almost like remember and pull my sleeves up and have a little look and have a little chat about them. I was working in a playgroup, and um, a couple of the parents came up to my boss and said that um, we've got concerns with one of your employees, the way that she looks. And um, my boss just basically turned around and said, come look at this. And all of the children draw pic drew pictures of me and I, they all had like green and black hair. And um, they always went home and talked about Auntie Janie all the time. And they didn't realise that the Auntie Janie was me. They thought there was a different member of staff. So once she explained that to them, they were like, oh, right, OK, yeah. When I first started, the head asked me to wear sleeves to here. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a few months. But then it came summer and it was really hot. So I just went to her and said, I'm, I'm boiling in this class. This class gets really hot. Um, so she said, yeah, that's fine. And then I've been fine ever since. I've been heavily tattooed for about 13 years, something like that. And the attitude from then to now is completely different. Y years ago, um, especially because I was a girl, 
I used to get abuse in the street and people showing things when they went past in cars. Um, I used to get quite a lot of abuse. Now I get more positive than negative. It's completely changed around. Because a lot more people are tattooed now. Celebrities are tattooed. It's a lot more acceptable to be tattooed. Um, and it's not seen as an alternative thing anymore. Like when I was heavily tattooed as a girl, everybody knew I was alternative, whereas now, Lots of like mainstream girls have sleeves of different things and it's not it's not just for people who listen to weird music as some people like to say. Whilst making this documentary, I was contacted by people from all over the world. This is what Brianna from New York City had to say. Two elderly women told her that her chest tattoo was going to send her straight to hell. And that her boss had told her that her tattoo being visible is annoying. I was also contacted by Quinn from Ontario, Canada. This is what he had to say. The children I work with love my tattoos. They ask if the drawings on my arm and legs are forever. At camp we have this activity called Paint Your Counselor, where kids coat us with paint. But when it comes to my tattoos, they take their time trying to colour it in. The kids love looking at them. They like that I have drawings on my body that will last forever. It's very interesting that people think children are scared of something as simple as physical appearance of some drawings, when it's in fact the close-minded individuals that choose to base their judgement of you, of how you look, rather than your job competence. After talking to Julie, Janie, the people of Manchester and all around the world, it's clear to see that the tide of tattoo ignorance is slowly on the way out. But it's still going to be a fair few years until we see total tattoo acceptance in the workplace. If you'd like to see extended and uncut versions of these interviews, please check out my YouTube channel and website. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Cthulhu, um, the uh, god in the story, the Call of Cthulhu, which is one of those stories that makes it everywhere in anthologies. Um, Legend of Zelda fan, so I've oh, got wow. Rock King on my chest. I've uh, got this as my very first one, oh. that's why it's a bit, you know, <laughs> I only intend to get a full piece. Um, got my sugar skull. But, uh, Plant from Little Shop of Horrors, so two of his Roy Toxic Boy. All my toes tattooed, knuckle duster, I've got a big bat's head on my shin. I've got a P for my niece, which I just got done this week. I've got question marks, because I've got a thing about question marks. And I've got a fairy, a doll's head. Um, I've got a zombie pinup, because I love zombies. I've got two J's for my daughter, who actually tattooed them on me. Cherries, I've got a Medusa. I've got a haunted house with a spider on my ankle, portrait of Kurt Cobain, I've got a big creepy house on my leg. Oh, I've got poison bottles on the back of both legs. I collect um, Friday the 13th tattoos on my hip, a gravestone, a 13, a cherry bomb. I thought you meant tattoos of Jason Voorhees. <laughs> <laughs> no.